Hello and welcome to the second jewelry jar video for Passions and Pastimes. I'm Pat Hood and these are my thrifting finds from the past four weeks or so. I'd like to start off with this cute little ceramic turtle. It is a pin. It's obviously handmade ceramic. Um, lovely glaze. A cute little face. And I was inspired to pick this up for Cindy Loves Jewelry. I love her videos and I bought uh, jewelry from her and she's just an outstanding person. So this is something that's going to be on its way to Cindy. You can tell her if you want to, but it's going to be a surprise. The next thing that I picked up was this. Now it doesn't look, you know, really exceptional, but I found it on the thrift board instead of uh, in the showcase mark 925 and I was pretty convinced that this outside edge was probably silver just by the look of it um, so I was uh, happy to bring it home and do some uh, investigation and you can't easily see it but here on the um, C clasp is a hallmark of a sword that's impressed in the silver and on this side, it says uh, 850. So uh, what that means is that uh, this, the sword is a symbol for, or a hallmark for jewelry that comes from Scandinavia or Denmark since 1980. So this is post 1980. Um, that's all, you know, that, I'm not sure if that means, uh, could go right up to 2019, but perhaps it could. Um, the 850 here on the clasp is the percentage silver. So this is not sterling, not 925, but uh, 850. So a lower quality of, of silver, which could be why it was on the thrift board, but um, it was a fun piece of, piece of detective work for me. And I think that it's uh, quite lovely and certainly um, can be worn with almost anything. I have a lovely blue jacket that could go on the collar. Um, anyway, I, I can't think of more examples right now, but that's a, I was, had fun doing the research on the hallmarks. This is something I picked up uh, a little while ago, simply because it really intrigued me in terms of the way it was constructed. This outside edge is not, not overly flimsy, but it could be bent. It's um, this type of a pin back. It is a C-clasp, um, but I'm not sure that it's particularly old. It actually looks to me like the kind of kit they would have sold in the 50s and 60s where you made your own pin out of a variety of components. I'm sure this center uh, blue stone is glass. The, um, you know, rind blue rhinestones are glass. What really intrigues me is this kind of putty-like substance that's brown that the rhinestones are set into. Um, I'm sure that it's changed um, in quality uh, of color and so on over the years. But I just think it's so interesting in and of itself that I had to purchase it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I paid a dollar Canadian. So for you uh, American friends, that's uh, 72 to 74 cents American right now. So just a curiosity that uh, I had to have. Another curiosity, but something that I think is absolutely gorgeous, is this mother of pearl pin of a bird. Now it looks to me like a crow because of the beak and the grasping feet and the type of tail, but you can decide what kind of bird you think it is. It has a lovely little black inlay eye, beautiful uh, texturing for feathers um, at the neck, uh, on the tail and the wings, and just a, uh, a simple glued on um, C-class pin. I don't think it's particularly old, um, at the, the day I bought it, there were other pins made from Mother of Pearl, 
uh, at uh, the thrift store. And I think that someone probably donated a collection of two or three, but I thought this was the most outstanding one. And it certainly will be a pleasure to wear it against uh, any background um, you know, that's dark, red, orange, blue, black. Another pin I picked up, um, silver tone is usually what I, I like to wear though since I started collecting jewelry I have been um, branching out into a lot more gold and, and it's really funny because one day my granddaughter said to me what do you like gold or silver and I said silver and she said well why not gold and I said well it's just not to my taste and that was a year ago and then since then I've been buying gold and she said well Nan I thought you said gold wasn't to your taste and I said well you know what I changed my mind <laughs> and uh, that's uh, a lot for a seven-year-old to think about. She happens to like gold, so she's glad that I'm uh, thinking like her now. Anyway, I picked up this silver tone pin, um, uh, a lovely leaf with a little stem or branch behind it. It is a Jerry's pin, which we don't very often see here, at least I don't very often find here uh, in Ontario, Canada. Um, in excellent shape, I have no idea how old it is, but um, beautiful silver, no signs of wear, beautiful shine, beautiful texture. So, uh, a lovely piece. Then I picked up this pin, and I know that there's lots of circle pins out there, um, but I thought that this one was uh, quite nice in and of itself. And this is actually an Avon pin, um, marked here, um, workable clasp. I like the fact that it's not shiny gold, that it's nice textured gold. The faux pearls are in very good shape. And um, I don't have to be embarrassed about changing my taste to gold. I think this is quite lovely. Now another uh, pin that I recently purchased, or no, sorry, not a pin, a pendant, is this, what I think Cindy Love's jewelry would call a uh, stinkingly gorgeous, uh, elephant pendant. It's hematite and it's got lovely metal embellishments for the tail, on the feet, um, as if it had a blanket on the back and a little rhinestone eye. And I love the little metal tusk. Um, I couldn't resist it. It's just so sweet. Um, so I'm quite happy to have found this and, it, and it'll be easy to put this on a, a gold tone chain to wear it or even on a, a hematite uh, necklace in which to wear it. I doubt that this is, uh, you know, of any great value or any great age, but hey, you know, beauty has its own value, right? Then for something very different, here's an embellished shell. Now there are quite a lot of embellished shells out there where they put the gold tone around the edge of the shell. Um, and this is a, an abalone shell of some sort. It's got the distinctive abalone holes. And I like how they've been highlighted um, with the gold tone. I have no idea if there's um, you know, any gold itself or if that's just a gold tone metal. I love the little swirl here. And again, a unique pennant. You could wear, you know, obviously wear it this way with the green showing forward. But it would also be kind of interesting to wear it this way, even to hang something else on the inside of that shell. But uh, for now, I just think it, it's a little work of art in itself. Now this I haven't taken off the pin off of the card recently, I should. Um, this is actually a gold filled pin. It was uh, $2 Canadian. I think they m missed the fact that it was gold filled. This is a real stone of some sort. I don't think that it's jade, but I just thought that this was such a sweet flower pin in and of itself. Um, the price was great. Um, it's got great style and curve to it, and um, it may not be vintage, but, uh, oh, there's a little, oh, that's the mark coming back. Just a second. Take it off the card. So here's the little mark on the back where it says it's um, 12K, uh, you know, 120th 12K or whatever. 120th 12K gold filled right there. 
And you can see it's open in the back and see some of the coloration in the stone itself. But in great condition, probably relatively new, but um, now it's a new treasure just for me. So in addition to the flower pin, I also picked up a couple of jade pieces recently. Um, because I uh, didn't have the chance to pick them up when I was in British Columbia in October, I had seen some things in a store that I really liked on Granville Island. Uh, but when I returned to the store, it was closed for the evening, and that was our last opportunity to shop there. So recently in my thrift store, I ran across this necklace with a pendant uh, labeled Canadian Jade and I'll have to take their word for it. I don't think there's any easy way that I can uh, distinguish between Chinese or Canadian jade any other way. Um, and it's just gold tone necklace, uh, a gold tone pendant with some rhinestones. The sales clerk thought it looked like an ear of corn, but I think it's just a stylized flower. And then to go along with um, the pendant, there were some lovely jade um, earrings from a company called Stones. Um, and again, they have the little rhinestone accents. So the two pieces, I think, fit uh, very nicely together. And I could even, uh, you know, add in the flower pin. And, uh, whoops, wear all three together. And uh, no one would really notice uh, that one of them wasn't jade. All right, so this is a little wonky. It needs to, whoops, <laughs> needs to have um, some of the arms put back into place a little better, but this is kind of like what they call a satellite pin. I like the, um, the black oxidization or painting uh, on the gold petals of the flower. And uh, this one's a little far out there, but anyway, we'll figure out what the best placement of these is on the outside. Um, lovely little pin, all the rhinestones are there, none of them are starting to darken, and it has an older uh, riveted clasp on the back, so I can't really speculate as to age. Um, but I haven't done any research yet, but once I do, I may be able to report back and update the video. Um, Working clasp, anyway, just these things are so much fun. I love brooches. Those of you who are uh, Sarah Coventry fans may recognize these. So these are a pair of Sarah Coventry earrings. Um, and I had not that long ago found uh, a lovely brooch set and bracelet. These aren't uh, any matching style or anything, but I thought since I don't find marked jewelry that often, that it would be a good idea to pick up these earrings. And I think these would be a lot of fun to wear. Um, they also could be convertible to um, for pierced ears if you really wanted to. Um, but I think for now, the, the backs aren't overly tight. So I think that since they're so light, that, that they'd be quite uh, easy to wear. Um, not like some of the really strongly pinching clipbacks. So Sarah Coventry marked on the uh, arm of the uh, back of the earring. And one more set of earrings. And I was going to save these to, sh to uh, show us some things that I bought recently, but I thought I'd show them now. Again, these are clipback earrings. They are not signed in any way obvious. Yeah, that little scrunch there is just like a scrunch. I don't think they are particularly old, um, but they are typical um, damascene style, the black oxidized back and the little prongs holding the centerpiece in. And for me, I collect the damascene with the birds on it um, just to coordinate a set. Um, though I do have one piece of oriental style damascene. Um, and so these are my newest acquisition. I'm going to see how they wear with the clip. And I'm, they, are, they would be very easy to um, 
switch to being um, pierced earrings. So I may do that. Uh, they're, they're not of great value, and I think there's more value in me being able to wear them easily. Um, so I'll see how they are as clip-ons, and I've also bought the supplies to uh, switch them from being clip-ons to uh, being either lever backs or um, uh, post earrings. So that's about it. That's my April haul for uh, uh, the final piece that I um, purchased just recently, and this is not a vintage piece, but it's um, from, a co from a company that I've started to collect. Um, this is from Seagull Fine Pewter Canada, and uh, some of the pieces I've uh, found have come from the U.S., obviously purchased um, there and then sold back here. Um, but I have a, um, a piece that came from a good friend you know, that's from the 80s, a couple pieces from the 90s, and now this piece, which is uh, from 2005. Um, I find the shape of uh, these pieces or the design of these pieces is always quite exceptional. Um, there's a huge variety in designs from Art Deco to... Uh, um, modern, I guess you would say, um, and this will be vintage according to Etsy in another five years, so uh, I won't have that long to wait if I ever decide to resell it, but for now, it's part of my Canadian Seagull Pewter collection. And uh, I'll be back soon with uh, more thrifting videos. You wouldn't believe the jewelry I've been buying. Oh, um, or probably you would if you're buying if you buy jewelry yourself.